something exciting has arrived. I think it's going to take a while to open this box. Scotland. Scotland. Eighteen-year-old Springbank, forty-six percent. Well, it's a very nice box, but it would be better if there was some whiskey in it. Oh! <laughs> At the moment, it's an empty box. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it'll be packed in there somewhere. <laughs> Balachin, Balakin, Balakin, probably. 13-year uh, burgundy cask, but no bottle. No, that's not it, but what is it? <sighs> Glen Grant, 20-year cask strength. Mmm. I'm a bit worried about this one. <laughs> Pink. So this is a bit of a weird one. Because it's a... Uh, well, I guess we'll find out. This is the Octomore, uh, should be the 6.1. Scottish barley, 6.1. Ah. Ooh, that will do you joy. Yeah, this is Roy recommended. I've been hunting one for a little while. It's the Lager Bull in 12. Let's hold that. Limited edition, bottled in 2012. Well, here Well, there's there's quite a lot of different ones. But we did like the Lagavul in 16, and we wanted to try the cask strength. But our recent efforts with cask strength suggest that we should maybe be a bit careful. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh! Keep that one for later. Old particular. 21 Glen Talkers. What does this look like? That one. Glen Talkers at 51%. Mm. Oh, careful. We have. Let's try not to drop it. Ah, Springbank 21. I don't know if we're capable of drinking it properly. We might have to graduate until we get up to the right level to appreciate it. This one was, I was looking for a bottling date. Bottled in 2015, I think. It says 1552. Yeah, on, on this little bottling date in here. For you. 2015. This is a very expensive bottle in the US. $380 or something like that. 
Oh, there's a little magnet. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> easily, uh, easily entertained. Highland Park 21. Another very expensive bottle over here. This is all because of drinking Highland Park Valkyrie. I think I'm the Highland Park fan, not so much deeper. But I have to say, when we tried Highland Park 18 at, at Bob's, I thought it was Ockentoshin, so I don't know what's going on there. Oh no, it's a ah, spam. The last one. And we absolutely have to hold. Roy for this one. Roy, look how much it's fun. Can you spot it through the packaging? Oh. Bunnahaben, Moinia, Oloroso. <laughs> now I can't get this packed out. We'll worry about it later. I know I could. Mm. I think you wanted this one. Yes. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Yes. How bad can they be? Uh, uh, hmm. Which ones are you most excited about? Let's put them in order of excitement. Which one? This is the most excited. Bonnehaven. Springbank Twenty One. Octomore, I'm definitely excited about Octomore. Lagavulin. Well, we have to do, we're going to have to keep this one. We have to put Springbank 18 in first. <laughs> well, hang on, which ones are we not excited about? <laughs> <laughs> All of this fun provided to you by Scotch Whiskey Auctions. Not that I really want to encourage people to go and make the prices higher, because I'm guilty of that already. I think there's two main reasons for buying from an auction. First, obviously, something that you can't buy as retail, which is most of these. Odd whiskies or interesting whiskies, things that are slightly out of date now, the Octomore 6.1 uh, is not available retail. And then things like independent bottlers, which maybe don't show up in the US but are available, available on auction. The second choice is to, or the second reason is to buy something that is just cheaper. And both of these, well, I guess the Highland Park's not really available, but certainly the Springbank, where's the 18? I've lost one, no, it's right here. Like the two Springbanks are just cheaper buying it at auction. If I bought this at Total Wine, the Springbank 21, I would have paid $350 uh, by the time I've put California taxes on and things like that. Now I ended up paying £170 for this, plus £19 for shipping and insurance. Then you got the conversion of the, the dollar rate and the fact that this bottle is 700 milliliter and the US is 750, so you've got to allow a little bit there. But I ended up paying the equivalent of $263 for this at the auction, saving almost £90, sorry, $90. So that is hopefully worth it. Same with the Lagavulin. At the time I ordered it, uh, the new version wasn't available, but this goes for about 150 to 160 in the US. This happens to be the 2012 edition. 
and it ended up costing the equivalent of 130. So a small saving on that one. But I think the things that are of most interest are really things that you can't get. A 20 year Glen Grant, Cadenhead. How bad can that be? It wasn't that expensive. Of course, it'd be better if I lived in the UK. Only 60 pounds for this. The problem is by the time the shipping and everything is on top, it came out at, uh, where has it gone? About $110, which actually means you're paying an exchange, an exchange rate of about $1.7 to the pound because of the shipping. When of course it's only $1.3 to the pound as a currency. The more expensive you go, the better the rate you get because the shipping is proportionately less. So in case of the spring bank, it was more like 1.45 to the pound, so not too bad. So if you're going to buy at auction, better buy something that's expensive or just very interesting. Or go to Scotland and pick them up.